In today's video, I wanted to finally tell you about the NeuroSim certified medical device that I've been promoting in my videos lately for positively influencing your vagus, vagus tone. And I've got this device a while back. I've been using it for a while. And today I finally wanted to tell you about how it's used, how it's supposed to be used and demonstrate its use for you. So let's get started. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Neurogenomics and let's get going. So what is this device? It's called Neurosim. And by the way, let's throw this in right now. If you want to get a discount for this device, link to the discount code is provided in the description below. And let's get going. So this is a device that is, as I mentioned, it's already certified for medical use in Europe. And it's the device that is supposed to help you improve your autonomic tone via the vagus nerve. What does that mean? Basically, we're talking about the activity of the vagus nerve. One interesting information that I heard in terms of how to compare it, think of a muscle tone. If you have a nice muscle tone, you're, you probably are a healthy individual and it's in the same fashion. If you have proper autonomic tone, that means you basically going to be working in a more appropriate, healthier fashion. So you can think of it this way. And it's also, it's basically a device that helps you to use the, to you safely and effectively balance your autonomic, autonomic tone for easy at home use. And as a consequence, um, this is basically a device for anyone who has disrupted autonomic vagus tone or who might be suffer be suffering from chronic inflammatory conditions okay so in terms of how does it work it works on the auricular auricular branch of your vagus nerve what does that mean your vagus nerve i've done a video in the past on the background of the vagus nerve it innervates broadly your body and it also innervates your ear and therefore it has ends that it has um, branches that and in the in the tragus right here and you can target the vagus nerve via electrical stimulation and therefore you can target it non-invasively so and those electrical stimulation these are the proprietary um, stimulus that is that has been developed by the company how to do this properly in order to achieve achieve this rebalancing of the vagus nerve so this is the neuromodulation that allows you to do it without any implantable devices this is the key here because this is one of the very earliest devices ever developed that has entered the market that is both certified and allows you to target the vagus nerve non-invasively all right so then um, what is the biological impact? What will it do? There's multiple things that it can achieve. So I already mentioned it can reduce the inflammation. That's one thing that it does. It also it helps, it activates the rest and digest component via the vagus nerve as well. So, um, and has its benefits via, via that way as well. And other biological components, how it acts mechanistically, it, it reduces the um, oxidative stress as well in the body. And last one is it can aid in neuroplasticity, plasticity, which basically means it can help formation of new neuronal pathways. Um, and all together, basically, this is how you can gain these benefits. It really works in many different biological conditions in helping uh, clinically improve this is according to to basically this company everything i'm telling you can clinically improve um, benefit provide benefits in many conditions we're going to go through this in detail as well there's so many it's just mind-boggling and the reason why is because the vagus nerve is uh, involved in so many different functions and um, and uh, through the activation of, uh, of the vagus nerve and improvement of this, of this autonomic tone, that information is sent to the brain and then it can 
act on many different organs in your body, such as your heart. And this is how you can improve, see improvements in many uh, conditions, okay? So who is this for? It's basically, as I mentioned, anyone who suffers from, from chronic inflammation or has disrupted autonomic tone. So also check out one of my past videos on great detail on this autonomia or basically conditions that where the autonomous nervous, autonomic nervous system is, can be disrupted from proper function. Um, okay, so then um, next maybe perhaps uh, let's talk about um, validation. What, what information is available that validates this technology? And again, remember this is everything based on what I have learned from the company itself and, and the background information that they provide on their website and so on. So first of all, they have partnered with uh, many clinical and academic institutes. Um, I believe it was 60 plus, um, including some of really big names such as Harvard. And of course, this had to do with uh, participation in, clinical, in some of their clinical studies. As a consequence, they mentioned that there have uh, now been, have recorded more than 2 million sessions of use of this, of this medical device with patients. So they have a very broad user base and lots and lots of data. And this, um, all of this data basically prov provided uh, them with the information that this is very safe and effective because no severe adverse events have ever been recorded. We will be talking about side effects as well to some degree, but n no severe adverse events ever recorded, so very safe. It has all of the, the, that clinical collaboration and uh, medical collaboration has resulted in uh, over 30 publications. I've only seen a few of these. Unfortunately, my background is very limited. I'd love to see all of them and hopefully in time I will but um, that's basically one of the claims and as a con and overall as I mentioned that this is already a device that is approved um, for medical use in Europe and its satellite markets as well and it has received FDA designation as a as a non-dangerous device for for research and therefore that that uh, also opens up further collaboration for future clinical um, trials in uh, that market. And of course, that designation was received based on uh, other clinical studies uh, already performed in, in that jurisdiction. So all together, basically, this clearly shows you, if you can summarize it, that this device has already um, received um, regulatory um, regulatory research so it basically it has already gone through regulatory audit i should say it has um, rigorous scientific evidence based publications and and great safety record of clinical use and basically their summary the company's neurosim uh, company's summary is that this is this device has basically the greatest um, amount of scientific support in terms of uh, vagus nerve neuromodulation. So it's the, the medical device that is that currently leads all of the devices in terms of uh, scientific research. All right, so um, next uh, let's talk about um, maybe um, what kind of conditions we could be using this. This is really, of course, very big. <laughs> Let's see if I'm going to even remember all of these. So number one, um, that uh, really the, the one condition that clearly to me looked like the company was promoting it the most, which suggests to me they probably have the largest amount of evidence for was chronic fatigue syndrome also known as myal myalgic encephalomyelitis. <laughs> Very hard to say for me. And also known as um, post-viral syndrome. So I've done a very big series on, on uh, 
long COVID and in that, that series, um, scientific research based on long COVID and how long COVID mimics many symptoms of the chronic fatigue syndrome. So please check that, check that out as well. And in fact, it was through those studies that I was first introduced to the vagus nerve as well and its, and its potential role in, in long COVID. And um, really, that's how it all started for me with in my interest in the vagus nerve and eventually led to the introduction of this company. Hence, my real excitement in promoting this device in hope that this will help with so many of the issues we are currently seeing with regards to long COVID. So, of course, the second condition in, that I will mention is then long COVID itself. I've already done one of the videos describing how this particular device have been used in, in small clinical trial, helping people alleviate some of the symptoms associated with long COVID. And by the way, I should mention that um, the, all of these conditions that I'm now mentioning, um, the company claims it can provide clinical therapeutic benefits. However, so that's their claims. However, I should also mention that they also state that clearly this is not a, all this information is not supposed to replace any medical advice you will ever get from your doctor. And this is also not a device um, that is um, to be used as a sole purpose to treat these conditions. It's supposed to be used as a complementary addition to um, however you, your medical doctors are um, telling you to, you should be treating yourself with regards to these conditions and you should always seek medical advice and in my opinion you should always let your doctors know whenever you're using these this device because of uh, how biologically impactful it can be to of course to your benefit but nevertheless it can be linked to how you might be already using medications and so on and we will go go down in the list as to who might not be using this device as well. So please keep that in mind as well. All right, so I mentioned these two long COVID um, and the list gets better and better, in fact. So they mentioned um, heart diseases, they mentioned um, atrial uh, fibrillation conditions as well. Next one I'm going to mention is uh, postural orthostatic uh, tachycardia syndrome or POTS, P-O-T-S. I did a very big video on this topic already where I explained how the vagus nerve in conjunction to your sympathetic nervous system, the flight and uh, fight and flight response together work in rapidly regulating how your heart perf um, performs. So please check that out as well. And we go down the list, they mentioned fibromyalgia. They talked to th they mentioned that it can work uh, in helping with the benefits of anxiety disorders, stress disorders, depression as well. So you can see there's si similar connections there. Uh, they mentioned it can help with migraines, it can help with insomnia. I can tell you uh, as well that from all of the testimonials I have received thus far, help with sleep is the one that is mentioned the most so far. It's like the number one mentioned benefit of use of this particular device. And uh, one that is of my great, great interest besides long COVID, because I understand there's tons of people suffering from long COVID or long bugs. And basically we're talking about um, the condition that that I'm going to mention that is of great interest to me besides long COVID is um, it can help with rheumatological, inflammatory or autoimmune conditions. The reason why that, that's of great interest to me because I really want to get into the more nitty gritty details of how vagus nerve neuromodulation influences um, autoimmune conditions. Remember in the video dedicated to POTS that I am uh, discussed, that was also linked and mentioned on how a use of the vagus nerve neuromodulation device could reduce autoantibodies or basically antibodies that would promote autoimmune conditions. So I really want to learn more about this as well. By the way, probably second most common benefit I have been 
receiving from testimonials is indeed in terms of help with pain and that includes pain from rheumatological conditions as well. So those are basically what have people told me uh, once they got this device. So the, that's not mm, coming from the company itself. This is basically coming from what I have received with what people have told me uh, over the time. And um, other conditions they also mentioned was uh, irritable bowel uh, con um, condition as well as um, those gastrointestinal uh, issues conditions. And um, last one, I think that they also mentioned burnout syndrome. So a very wide gamut of different conditions that uh, they proclaim that this device can really help with symptoms. And I really hope I'll be be able to keep studying this and getting this information to you with regards to scientific information and scientific support. Now, they also mentioned that besides this, it can also help with, uh, with improving um, basically health status. So, of course, we mentioned it can help with the rest and digest. So, it can relax you, help your mood and, and um, improve your heart variability tone as well. But there is a couple other ones that were really interesting. So they also mentioned that there they have they are now accumulating uh, accumulating evidence that it can help with your learning and short term memory. And so I thought that's really interesting and apparently they actually have a secret code that if an individual who has this device wanted to use it for that specific purpose, you can key in this code using the buttons on the device. And I'll show you the device right away in terms of using it for that specific purpose because then the actual impulse, how it's working on, on your vagus nerve is, is uh, I think it changes. And um, I, I haven't ever used this yet. I should, probably should, considering how much I'm studying. And the idea is, is that it's especially effective if you use this device in conjunction to, to learning. So I thought that was really interesting. And they also have now emerging evidence that the device could also help with athletic performance. And this one actually makes sense to me from a biological point of view because remember a long time ago I also made a video discussing how athletic performance is linked to your innate immunity and you need immunity, your innate immunity in helping recover in recovery um, post uh, post athletic stress and the injuries that, that are caused by athletic performance. So not a big surprise for me considering that the vagus nerve is clearly involved in modulating your Im immune immune response as well all right so um, um and um yeah so that that's on mm, on uh, basically in what conditions um this device can help now let's talk about um, who is not supposed to use this um, before we get into showing you how to use the device. And this is similar to basically, like let's say, who you would exclude in clinical trials. So the two big ones, first of all, uh, it's not for pediatric patients. So no one be um, by, under the age of 18, it's supposed to be using this. And the reason, simply the reason why is because um, I'm guessing the studies performed thus far used adults only and therefore without evidence you should not be using this device on children. Another one is pregnant women and again the same concept if there is no supporting evidence with particular individuals then then um, likely um, you can advertise the use of this uh, device if, um, on uh, such sensitive uh, individuals as uh, during pregnancy so again Pregnant women are not supposed to use it. The rest of uh, mentions as to who's not supposed to be using is linked to basically heart performance. And so one they mentioned is no one with implanted, implanted electronic device shouldn't be using it. So we're talking about um, if, you, if you have pacemaker or if you have implanted device to help with your hearing, any any implanted medical electronic device, you're not supposed to be using Neurosim, uh, so that they could not, should not basically 
interfere with one another in any way and cause problems. And then um, in terms of heart conditions, anyone who has suffered heart attack or stroke in the last five years is not supposed to use it. This is unfortunate because I can tell you that from my studies uh, over uh, the use of vagus nerve mm, neuromodulation devices, there is emerging evidence that it can help with with the recovery post-stroke. Um, so clearly the makers of this device basically would need supporting evidence for this particular device. And remember, it's a proprietary specific, um, specific electronic uh, micro impulses that are being used. So therefore it might be only for these conditions and not others. I would hope that one day they're going to basically be able to provide supporting information how individuals could be using it post-stroke, but at the moment, no. So anyone who had heart attack or stroke in the last five years, you're not supposed to use this device as well. And then also anyone who might have certain heart complications. So if you had uh, severe heart failure, you're not supposed to use it. If you have bradycardia, so bradycardia is a reduced heart rate. Uh, so tachycardia is, uh, is when you have a too, too fast heart rate, but the cardia is the opposite. So reduced heart rate, you're not supposed to use it. If you have, um, um, if, if your valves are not, heart valves are not working properly, you're not supposed to be using it. If your uh, sinus is not working properly, sinus is the spot in your heart that, that um, sends the electrical impulses in your heart to basically make your heart beat. If that's not working properly, you're not supposed to use this device. So you can see the link here is like, if you have serious heart complications, do not use this device. Why? Because this device does influence your heart performance as well, okay? And then lastly, if you had um, your vagus nerve operated upon and cut, and cut in any way, then you're not supposed to be using this device as well. The one group of people that they do not mention that I would want to add is patients with cancer, but not necessarily any cancer. I can tell you that, again, based on the vagus nerve neuromodulation studies I have looked at, there is also some emerging evidence that vagus nerve neuromodulation can help with cancer. And I hope I'll be able to do this, uh, this info videos on this information for you as well. However, um, based on, and this is the advantage of, of uh, me being a scientist, I obviously study a lot of science and I can tell you with regards to the vagus nerve and neuromodulation, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this, uh, with this nerve. Basically, when it comes to scientific literature that I looked at, I'm going to guess somewhere around 99% of everything I've seen, mm, it was all about positive outcomes of vagus nerve neuromodulation on everything that, that I've seen being tried upon. Hence, I'm so in love with this. Clearly, I'm going to find some negative outcomes in the future um, as I continue studying this. But right now, the overwhelming information that I've looked so far, it's all about how amazingly it can help with recovery for so many of these conditions. Cancer actually is one of them where there is now emerging information as well. But one cancer type of cancers that I will mention that I would recommend not to use this device is cancers that are accompanied with high levels of IgG4 antibodies. And the reason why is because I'm studying this from a molecular point of view where under such conditions, cancers can also take advantage of certain molecular benefits of vagus nerve neuromodulation and, and make situation worse. So that's, that's basically my personal extra one that I will add that if you have cancers and you have high level of IgG4 antibodies and also on top of that certain genetic predispositions, then this device would not be for you. Now, clearly this is a very small subset of users, but keep that in mind. Um, and you can check out my other videos on these topics as they emerge. All right, so this is basically for who's not to be uh, using it. So, the, uh, and the warnings, okay? Now let's talk about the, how this device is supposed to 
um, be using. So this is how we're going to wrap up this video. So the device itself comes in this nice cute little pouch, travel pouch as I call it. And let's uh, bring out the device. I'm going to show it to you. It's what I love about this device. It's insanely simple to use. I'm glad that the, basically the makers of, the, the, of this device made it this simple because there, you can hardly screw up using it. And, um, and that includes me. It look, it's a very sleek device. It looks like this. Basically, the first thing, if you want to use it, if you have any jewelry in your ear, in your left ear, because this is actually supposed to be used on your left ear, you need to remove it because obviously you're going to be sending electrical current through your this portion of your ear. It's called tragus, this part right there. So you're supposed to wet it a little bit. What I normally do is I lick my fingers and I wet it. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to have a video evidence of me licking my own ear. <laughs> so, but basically you take, you see it, this device comes with this clip. This clip, this is attached via the wire to the device itself. You clip that into onto your tragus right there. And really I shove this in deep, really deep, in, deep into my ear. So be generous now it's with that now it's clipped in and i'm ready to go so this is what the device looks like and then basically this is the power button there's only four buttons power button enter button plus minus okay so we're gonna do the power button first and the first thing is what you're going to see here is basically this is you're going to set the amount of time you're supposed to use this device for. What I recommend that if you are getting this device, if you've never used this before, the very first time you set it for something very short, only like five minutes. And the only reason why I suggest that is just to test the safety of the device for you. Why do I mention that? While they have never recorded any severe adverse event, the human biology is so vast in its complexity, they're could always be a possibility that someone's biology is not compatible with the use of this device and you could find that out immediately and we're going to talk about basically when you should uh, cease using this device maybe i should mention that right now if you're feeling faint or dizzy um, like you're about to faint or you're feeling like you're uh, you uh, feel dizzy or you're experiencing shortness or of breath or chest pain you want to stop using this device immediately and and that might not be for you it is possible in the great complexity of human biology that you and this device will not be compatible so i always recommend start with only a few minutes once you test it for a few minutes and you know it's safe then the device you can use it up to 60 minutes and this is the, the timer this timer can be used up to 60 minutes to change the timer you simply go up or down and then you press enter. Now this device is already on. Right now you see a bunch of zeros, right? It means at the moment it's not sending any electrical input, but um, this is now where we're going to start increasing the input. Now in terms of amount of time, as I mentioned, the recommended amount of time is 60 minutes. You can do it all in one go, or you can split it between two sessions of 30 minutes each. So you, if you wanted to use it more than once a day, um, then um, and one thing that I can tell you here is the weird thing about this device that they didn't mention anywhere um, in any of the information I've studied and to me is that this device can actually become somewhat addictive the reason why is because for me and my use it has a very rapid relaxation effect and it's actually known for that it's a, it it, the purpose of neuromodulation of the vagus nerve is clearly to put you in that rest and digest response and part of that response is to obviously lower your stress and relax you and you can feel that instantly and it's similar to addiction you can think of like smoking and by the way the work of <laughs> smoking and this device work on the same principles this device is supposed to is supposed to help with the vagus Tone, and that means the vagus nerve will now be releasing acetylcholine. Nicotine is a chemical that makes acet acetylcholine, and you can see how perhaps you could you could be you could really get addicted to this device. And the reason why I say this is that all the studies or the few studies I've so far looked at using this device 
and these studies, they only use this device for up to 60 minutes per day, no more. I say don't use it more than that. Follow what has so far been done clinically in the studies that I've, I've done. And this is to maybe help you not get addicted to it. This is not something that people have really considered apparently, but it's, it's absolutely amazing how easily and rapidly it can influence your mood. And if, um, say, you are someone who has the propensity to be stressed easily, I can see how you might have the desire to use it frequently. And I say don't use it more than the total amount of allotted amount um, that, is, that this device um, gives you in terms of how long you're supposed to be using it, which is 60 minutes the most uh, in a day. All right, so here... We have 30 minutes. I'm going to press enter. Now I'm the end device is on. What you're supposed to do now is start increasing the number of um, impulse. So this is the power of the impulse. And this is your <clears throat> only control that you have over this device. And you're supposed to start increasing this one per second. Um, and basically you increase it until you actually start feeling pleasant electrical stimulation via via your tragus via your that little ear lip and so for me so you just keep going do not rush with this because you could easily overdo it and it could then get you could get to a point where it's actually painful so for me my device my number is somewhere around 20 um I've seen people with much higher numbers and uh, I've also seen lower numbers. So don't be surprised. I'm already feeling it right now. I'm clearly feeling it right now. I'm going to mm, increase it because it's still comfortable to 20. I'm going to press enter. And now you see this blue light. The device is on and that's it. This is now the device is already operating. The only one more thing that I'll mention is that they do have mm, convenient emergency um, escape button so you, if you press the negative button twice you can immediately you can see you can start decreasing the the number why would that be of interest to you is because this device is so rapid in potentially relaxing you is that if i set my device to 20 right now because 20 felt good in few minutes or few moments that that number can actually feel like, oh, actually this is now mm, a little sore. And the reason why is because your body already was, was provoked into relaxation and that number already feels too high and you might need to decrease it. And that's actually normal, not a surprise. Don't be surprised if you actually see that effect uh, at all, okay? Mm. And one thing is that they also mentioned, which I thought was so interesting is that while they don't have concrete proof of this, but basically the number that you start at might change from day to day. And the reason why is because it might depend on your given day stress level. And there's different things that can happen, whether you your life experiences or the amount of inflammation that is taking place inside your body to who knows, maybe what you ate that, that day, right? And, and uh, so don't be surprised that if that number might change from day to day. And I thought this is really cool because you can actually monitor to some degree indirectly what is your stress level from day to day by looking where, what number you need to reach in order to get that similar mm, electrical um, impulse in, in, in your ear. So basically this is how the device works and that's another really really i find fun benefit of the use of this device um, that you can gives you that that extra data if you will this is for my own personal use and i can tell for example that um, different days i i need a um, i'm gonna call it bigger hit higher number and and the days uh, other days i need a lower number and of course i always feel so proud of myself when i need a lower number because i'm like yeah i'm not as stressed today as i was yesterday all right so mm, that's um, probably everything that i need to tell you in terms of how to use this device um also if you do use this for 60 minutes uh in a day the makers of the device the company, by the way, is called Parasim. The device is called Neurosim. 
Um, and since I mentioned Neurosim again, please check out the link in the description where you can get this device at a discount. So might as well save yourself some money. And um, if you use it for 60 minutes, they recommend do it in the morning. And uh, if you split it in, in 30 minutes per day, then do one in the morning, one in the evening. Why those are the best time uh, points in order to use it? It's because there is evidence that this your vagus nerve tone performance is linked to your circadian rhythm. And that's when you see the greatest activation of your um, sympathetic uh, nervous system in those, in those days. And how long are you supposed to use it for? You're supposed to use it this device for for whatever you hoping that you might be alleviating your symptoms uh, with this device you're supposed to use it between 30 to 90 days to potentially see improvements now this device comes with 30 day day uh, guarantee uh, use so if you don't see improvements in 30 days on what you're looking for. You can return this device for full refund minus most likely shipping uh, um, itself, but um, you have that 30 day uh, guarantee, return guarantee. So if you don't see improvement in symptoms you're looking for, then you can always return it, which is great because most likely you would be able to see improvement. Some people see improvement like very rapidly. So some of the some of the testimonials I, I received in terms of improvement in pain, very rapid. But don't be surprised if you don't and you need to be persistent and you might need to use it for up to 30 days in order to see improvement in symptoms. Some people also told me they've used it for even longer than 30 days before they felt that they're they're seeing improvements as well. Um, I'm not going to mention any additional t testimonials in this video. I'm going to save that for another video, but I do have a, um, a whole bunch of new testimonials as well that I want to share with you in the future as well. And then when all, and the last thing that I should mention is when you're not supposed to use this device and you're not supposed to use devi this device uh, basically in a bath or in a shower. It's an electronic instrument. Do not get this device wet. Do not use this device while driving or operating any any equipment and the reason why is again remember you can feel dizzy if uh, if you are of a certain biological predisposition right so do not use it under such conditions and do not leave it uh, leave it um, in a place where kids could basically be able to get their hands on right so those are basically some safety precautions uh, as well and uh, as i mentioned before if you see any uh, any issues you want to um, stop using it. Aha, uh -huh. now let's mention potential side effects. Now, as I stated before, they've never recorded any severe adverse events. Typically, um, the most common side effect that they've observed is potentially irritation of the, of the skin where the device is used. And I felt that myself. Um, simply if, if you use it for 60 minutes and there's obviously electrical impulse then that you will feel that you will literally feel that on your skin and typically the symptoms if you have any symptoms they recover rapidly usually within a day some other symptoms um, that people have observed um, as I mentioned you can feel a little dizzy you can feel faint um, but um, as some people have also reported the shortness of breath and even um, can go as far as maybe uh, heart rate can change. However, those are fairly or all fairly rare. So um, the, the makers of this device are very proud to um, often repeat the information how safe uh, this device is for, for, its, uh, for its use. Um, but um, yeah, if you see those symptoms again, stop using the device. And if any severe adverse events are ever we, um, observed by you, definitely let the company know um, as well so that they can start collecting that information. All right, so I'm gonna finish my session and uh, with using this device as well as with uh, a session with recording this video. But basically, there you go. That's basically how you use this device. Very sleek, very cool very fun and easy to use um, and uh, uh, one more thing that i mentioned and i've mentioned to, to other people if you plan to use this device note your symptoms be generous with that and rate them 
do your own scale from one to 10, rate them before you start and then rate them after a month. This is going to be your own subjective observation, but it can help you maybe observe, did it help or not? If it didn't, if you don't see improvement in those subjective numbers based on your own obviously judgment, then that's when you can consider returning the device or decide to keep it for your future use. All right, I'm gonna end it right here. That's uh, all I have for, for you today. Um, I hope, uh, and please let me know what this device do for you in what ways did it help you and what ways did it fail to help you because those are the testimonials that I'm compiling. And um, right now I have 10 testimonials and I would love to have way more I, you know like really before i i can truly claim that we're getting really really accurate information from testimonials is probably when i reach about a hundred of these testimonials so i want a lot more of these testimonials so please don't be shy email me uh, if you need if you need to if you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment in one of the youtube videos such as this one then email me and let me know and few of you have done that and i appreciate that but yeah i really want to start tracking this information uh, myself all right i'm going to wrap it up here please share this video this is how we can propagate this information please uh, subscribe to the channel this is how we grow please leave leave comments to this video on your basically your experience with this device or basically your experience with the vegas nerf itself and we we are trying to really answer all of the comments when it comes to the videos uh, related to the vagus nerve neuromodulation we're really um, diligent on that it helps because it's not as crazy as some in terms of number of comments as some of the other videos and and also please check out the patreon account as well and um, with, where we post videos um, that do not make it to the YouTube uh, uh, channel. And I uh, also plan to post some future videos there on the Vegas Nerve as well. All right, that's all I have for you. Bye for now, everyone, and I'll see you in the next installment. Ciao.